Hey folks, it's Echo here. As Alpha 21 rapidly approaches, I got a little nostalgic and started looking through some of the bases that I've built over the course of Alpha 20. These come from a variety of sources, including the Totally Not Prepared server, my community servers, Twitch streams, and then a bunch that I just built in the prefab editor. This will just give you a little taste of each base, but if you're interested in a deeper dive, I've got full videos on each one of these with tours, design tips, and horde battles, and I also have these all available for download on my Patreon. And with that, let's begin my farewell to Alpha 20. The Night Train was my first attempt at a crawler base, and if you're not familiar with a crawler base, the whole concept is that you force the zombies into kind of a one block space so that they crawl at you, leaving their heads very exposed for easy headshots. And also notably, it was my first time playing with kind of a steampunk design. On my community server, Devil Dog had used the clay roof texture on pipes, which gives a really metallic finish on any type of rounded object. In this base, the electronics are pretty compact, so those pipes serve to hide a lot of the cable work running through the base. This base has pretty much so everything you need to survive from a crafting area to an indoor farm, tons of defenses, and the ability to repair most of the traps during Horde Night. Frosthaven was one of the early bases I built in Alpha 20. It came soon on the heels of the Warden's Shield, which we'll get to in a little bit here. But the focus of this was to play with the new rounded block shapes. And the idea behind this base is a central walkway that the zombies have to traverse that is covered in electrical fences. This also has all the typical stuff you need to survive in terms of crafting. It's got a farm in the top of the central spire, along with a sitting room for some RP element. One of the challenges for this base was coming up with custom tops for the seven meter towers, as unfortunately there's no blocks for a standard cone. The whore battle on this one was particularly memorable because I had Tim Recky from Guns, Nerds, and Steel over to join me, as well as a handful of community members. If the night train was my first step into the steampunk world, this is the full evolution. The design of this base was briefly sketched out on a sheet of paper and then built over two or three live streams on YouTube. The basic concept was to have a ladder base with the overall top down shaped kind of like an arrow. And I knew that I wanted two separate fighting positions. And from there, it just kind of evolved into what you see here. One of my favorite aspects of this base were the fact that it was built so organically. During the live streams, I would get feedback from the community and add elements of what people were suggesting in real time. So if you're a builder type and you wanna see large bases like this built in real time, join me and subscribe to check out some of the other live streams. This is my absolute favorite crafting base I've ever built. I put this together on the Totally Not Prepared server just after the Alpha 20 drop. I had already built the community server horde base, and then I put this together. The whole design concept of this one came as I was augering out huge spaces in here and was just about to fill everything back in with blocks and realized that red soil that you have in the desert makes for a gorgeous backdrop. So I embedded lights in the walls and then put security grates in a crosshatch formation over top. And though this is not a horde base, it does have enough automated defenses that I could probably hold up to a pretty sizable horde. It's got automated turrets, doors, etc., on both ends coming in and out of the base. Additionally, with only a few exceptions, the majority of the electrical work is accessible through a series of service tunnels that run underneath the base. Additionally, it has this escape tunnel out the back that leads up to a garden that is nested in the hillside, which allowed me to be the primary chef for the server and have a nice place to relax. So a couple months back, I got offered the opportunity to help do some of the testing on the Twitch integration coming to Alpha 21. So this base was built over a series of Twitch streams using an experimental version on Alpha 20. Since this was designed with Twitch integration in mind, it's got some unique characteristics to it. I had to learn how to survive after the community learned how to blow up your land claim block, then spawn zombies inside your base, or force a horde knight premature. Smaller in footprint to some of my other bases, this was designed to be able to quickly drive your vehicle in, drop stuff off, and then get back to the action. The 
The Warden Shield was one of the first bases that I built after Alpha 20 dropped. The whole goal of this base was to explore all the new shapes that they had added into Seven Days to Die. So this allowed me to play with the new rounded towers. It also allowed me to play with the idea of using drawbridges to control the flow of zombies on Horde Knight. So the top drawbridge is to allow vehicles in and out, but the bottom two are switchable from the interior of the base at the fighting positions, allowing zombies to come in either side. Once inside, they kind of go through this little obstacle course up to a fighting position where you can defend. If either of the sides gets significantly damaged, you can just simply switch to the other one and you're good to go. The space also sports two or three different levels. This is the primary where you drive in. Below this, I've placed a study as well as made a place to keep a lot of the electronics in the base. The exterior of the base is surrounded by a moat, which was done in the prefab editor because in the real game, that'd be a nightmare. The Desert Panda was a massive build out that I did on one of my community servers a few seasons back. My tendency is to combine horde and crafting bases into one, but the goal behind this one was to have them as separate units. So the front section of this is the fighting position and the garage and crafting area is actually a totally separate building which is connected by drawbridges across the top. This allows for all your inventory and crafting stations and all that good stuff to be safe during Horde Night, while also having the close proximity of the Horde base to not have to travel far. The top of this base serves as a landing pad for gyros, and the Horde base is actually broken into four separate lanes, which are themselves separated into two different sides for complete redundancy. In terms of powertrain, this is completely solar powered, with cables deftly hidden in all the walls. Winter's Edge was the second massive horde base that I built on the community server. Similar to the Warden Shield, this leverages drawbridges to be able to let the zombies in either of the lanes. Once in, the lanes converge on a single stairway up to a fighting position. The upper levels include all the community inventory, a parking garage, a pool, farm on the top with bulletproof glass above that to land gyrocopters, and a whole lot more. Ultimately, this base was an answer to a lot of YouTube comments saying that the bases and the size that I build were just not practical or reasonable outside of the prefab editor. So I leveled up, grabbed myself an auger, and farmed every last bit of material to put this thing together. Finally, this base had one of the most fun multiplayer experiences for Horde Knight of any base that I've ever done. So I originally designed the Hydra back in Alpha 19, but I didn't have nearly the block shape options that we had in Alpha 20. So after reviewing those new blocks, I dusted this sucker off, spent some time in the prefab editor and designed these crazy dragon heads to go on each side. This is designed so that each of the four sides acts as a separate lane for zombies to come in during Horde Night. And depending upon the vault door inside the dragon's mouth that's switched on at the time, it allows them to come right on in. There's a ton of different spots to hang out on the base when you're fighting. You can ride on top of the dragon's head and shoot down from there. And there's additional fighting positions up above. The top of the base houses a garden as well as a few turrets to keep the buzzards away. If you're curious on how to build the head itself, I've got a separate video doing a block by block instruction for that. In addition to the horde base breakdown that talks about the base as a whole. Void's End will be my final base for Alpha 20. This was built over three live streams with the initial concept coming from my 5x5 Glock 9 challenge. In that challenge, I had created a spiral staircase with different breakpoints where you could fall back as the horde approaches. After I finished the first tower here, the folks on the stream said, hey, what if you connected this to a crafting base? Leaning into this, I took it as a yes and, and went ahead and built a second tower on the other side. The end result of this is a central crafting tower with a gyro launch pad and garage below, flanked by two separate, completely independent horde bases. Each of those horde bases has two separate fighting points and are connected to the main spire through automated drawbridges controlled by trigger plates. Void's End is the pinnacle of all my learnings in Alpha 20 and an excellent farewell. Hey folks, it's Echo here. Thanks for indulging me on that little stroll down memory lane. If you're curious about any of these bases, all the associated videos are linked below and they're available for download via my Patreon. 
Thanks to all the folks over here who've supported me and made it possible for me to create these bases. Take care, folks. I'll see you on the next one.